Hello and welcome back to NV Fine Art Studio. I'm Nina and today we are talking about mixing grays. I'm sure many would say grays are not so significant. Why would you bother if there are so many ready available grays? Others would say no, you need to mix grays as even with all possibilities readily available, you still need more options. Let's address both of these stereotypes about grays, as both of them are not quite accurate. Firstly, let's answer why question. Why even bother with grays? Let's imagine we are out in the country, we see blue sky, blue mountains, green and yellow grass and trees. But in reality, there are hardly any primary colors out there. We only see the colors due to light. As soon as light is out, everything is gray. Because the color is light and light is waves, they bounce off each other. So as soon as we start adding multiple colors in one environment, we start getting grays as well. In other words, the colors blue, green, red, yellow in nature bounce from each other and reflect in each other. Literally, there are no pure primary colors in nature. Let me show you an example of a sky that many paint with cobalt blue and cerulean blue. Here's a photo and here's how I mix blue for the sky. I grab cobalt blue, add a bit of red and a bit of yellow. So basically I'm mixing three primaries together. Blue, red and yellow. Sounds familiar? Yes, this is how we mix grey. The bottom of the sky, the sky that is closer to the horizon line, is usually warmer, so I add a little bit more yellow to the mixture and paint the area closer to the horizon line. And the sky at the top is usually a little darker, and then the forest is a little darker, so I add a little bit more colors to increase the value of the mixture and make it darker. Here's the pure cobalt blue and pure cerulean next to the sky that I just painted. See how off and overly saturated pure colors are in comparison to the gray, the cool gray that we just mixed. Please note, lots of photos out there are photoshopped and look more like that. I'll come back to this notion in a minute. But for now, I want to remind you once more, I mixed blue, yellow and red to get to this color of sky. As soon as I mix blue, red and yellow together, it is no longer a color, it is a gray. So, this color blue that you see is actually a cool shade of gray. It's as simple as that. As soon as you mix three primary colors together, it is a gray. And everything you see around you is a warm or cool shade of gray. Hope you see now why it is essential to mix grays. And not because there are not enough shades of gray from tombs, and it is not because the gray asphalt that you're trying to paint in a street scene is not quite paint gray, or the stones on a beach are not quite neutral tint. It is because everything is some sort of gray color. It is always a mix of three primaries. If at this point you start thinking, what about brown? Brown is not gray, but brown is actually gray. A very warm shade of gray. As it is mixed with these three primaries, with an accent on red and yellow. And it is crucial to understand that the brown is actually a gray, particularly when you paint shadows. As I mentioned before, the lack of light results in ultimate pure lack of color. In other words, in pure natural gray. So, as soon as the shadow glimpses a bit of light, it gets warmer. It gets brown and golden and red. The further away it goes out of the sun, out of the light, the cooler it gets up until it's pure neutral temperature of gray or black. Another little problem that I want to address, many of us paint from photos and nowadays the photos that we find online are heavily photoshopped. Even with photos that we take ourselves and look at on devices such as TV, phone, computer, screen and so on are oversaturated and vibrant. 
And this is what our modern media imprints in our mind. This is what we think how nature looks. I cannot stress enough how important it is to paint from real life. Whether it's still life portrait, nature, get out there and analyze and think for yourself what you see. Quite often you see colors in different ways when you're outside. You look at nature and you look at your palette and it is as clear as that that the sky is not open blue. Perception of colors is very important. It is often not what we see, but what we think we see. And as an artist, we have to learn to see the truth, not the commonly accepted version of truth. Enough talking, let's mix our million per billion shades of gray. Unfortunately, I'm not going to give you perfect formula for your gray roof or gray asphalt or gray stone out there. But fortunately, I will show you how to mix just three colors together to get every possible million per billion shades of gray you might ever need. As I mentioned before, to get gray, you need to mix three primaries, blue, red and yellow. Or you may mix opposites, but opposites are one primary and another one secondary. And the secondary is usually a mix of the other two primaries. So basically you mix three primaries anyway. When you mix your primaries, you shouldn't think of color as such as it's gray anyway, but you need to think about temperature of that gray. The more red or yellow you add to the mix, the warmer the mixture, the warmer the gray is. The more blue you add to the mixture, the cooler the mixture will be and the gray you have. But what if you don't want to use primaries? What if you want to experiment with other colors? Please do so. You would be surprised how different pigments affect your grays. The granulation, the opacity, the tonal values and the raw materials used to produce these paints are all crucial and affect the final result. But you will also learn that no matter what color name you see, you still can achieve the same result as long as you focus on the temperature, as long as you try to match the temperature. For example, I like the result you get from mixing alizarin crimson and cerulean blue. Alizarin is a very strong, intense and staining red. It adds an amazing glow to the gray. I also like to mix ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to achieve granulation and suggest a textured surface. The mix of ultramarine blue results in a cooler gray. So if I add a bit of red to ultramarine and burnt sienna, the mix will be warmer and I'll start suggesting a glimpse of light hitting that area that I'm painting. If we look closely, the mix of ultramarine Burnt sienna and alizarin is reminiscent of the mix of alizarin and cerulean. An interesting observation here is that it is a very similar looking grays achieved by different colors. Another great mix is cobalt blue and sepia. It is a cool, very subtle and mellow gray, very moody and romantic in my opinion. These are the two colors that I based this entire painting on. And even though I didn't paint all the shapes in traditional colors, all of this still makes perfect sense. And we know what is what. It is actually quite the opposite. The painting looks sophisticated, moody and full of feelings. So here's the mixture done from cobalt blue and sepia, but if we look closely to the mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine, it is a very similar hue of grape. Even the granulation is there. And this is the idea I usually try to convey. The colors you are using do not matter as much. It is important to pay attention to the tonal value and temperature of the final mixture. Another very important point, basically returning back to what we started with, you don't mix burnt sienna and ultramarine for the rocks in your painting, then grab Prussian blue and cadmium red and use it for asphalt, and then grab sap green, add alizarin and paint the tree trunk. It all will be all over the place. 
That's why there is no magic formula for your perfect object. You need to choose three core colors for your painting and stick to them. All objects need to be painted with these three core colors. This will ensure the color harmony, the balance, the mood, the sophistication and realistic appearance without any hyper-realistic approach in your painting. Here's a good example Baptist Church in Ivanhoe painting. The core colors are cerulean blue, burnt sienna and red. It is harmonious, it is full of light and atmosphere. It is realistic enough to tell the story, you know what is what, yet the sky is in blue, the trees are not green and the road is an asphalt gray. Another example, sunset at Rimaski. I picked a lizard, cerulean blue and yellow ochre. This painting is on a cooler side and suggests early morning and chilly air. Some may say it is nothing to do with grace, yet if I isolate areas so you don't see the red against the blue, you will understand that each color is actually a warm or cool gray because they are mixed with three primaries, three sort of primaries. Anything related to color and temperature is relative, so this is why it is important to start with three colors, the core mixture and then just vary it towards warm or cool. This is how you mix your grace in your painting and achieve color harmony. No magic formula, no way around it. Lots of fun and practice with your primaries of sorts. But don't you think it is actually easier than remembering which mixture for which object. This is all for today. Please don't forget I have Patreon with full real-time demonstrations. And all the examples I showed today are available on Patreon in full. I don't just do demonstrations. I usually cover a little bit of theory or practice in each video. I always explain why and how and not just the colors I pick. If you feel like you're stuck and need a bit of support to get to another level, please find me there. The link will be here and in the description below. This is all for today. Hope it was informative. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit that notification button so you don't miss out on my new videos. It will help my channel to grow. Until my next video, bye!